What's up, nerds? Welcome to Nintendo Power Block for August 15th, 2017. I'm one of your hosts, Corey Deering, and alongside me, as always, that retro code, Edward Varnell. I love to hop, skip, and jump for Nintendo Power Block. Yes, I'm pumped. <laughs> Ed, your intros every week just make me laugh because I never know what's coming. I'm uh, positive. I love doing Power Block. I know. I love Power Block, too. Joining us again for the second episode in a row. <laughs> El Capitan himself from Nerd Overdrive, Ray Osorio. What's up, guys? Rise above. Ray, I'm so glad you're back. Yeah, yes. you br- you guys brought me back after that crazy episode last week. I was just like, Ray, okay, you, I'm, ba- I'm back again. Ray, <laughs> you know you can just show up on any show, and we're just going to be like, all right, Ray's okay. here. Let's go. Let's right. do it. <laughs> oh, man. How's everyone doing? Don't forget, last episode, we had a smorgasbord <laughs> of everything besides Nintendo. Oh, we oh, talked I about every. I, list- I just watched that back on YouTube. I was just like, yeah, where was the Nintendo talking? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have more non-Nintendo talk today. So, I mean. Yeah, so, as do I, because, you know, things yeah. and stuff. Oh, okay. man. I'm so excited to talk about the games I've been playing, though. Oh, oh yes. So, but we're going to. St- Ray or Ed, we're gonna start with you. We're gonna start with you, Ed, because you're probably the only one that's been playing Nintendo games. Uh, uh Dragon Quest Eight. Um, I played uh PS2 game. It, nice. <laughs> I went. I beat it for uh PS2. I actually am uh at the halfway point. Got to Del Magus, which is the villain that the heroes are chasing at this time. Um, got my tail kick, and I'm like, yep, I need to go back and grind and uh get the new weapons and armor. So. Um, I'm playing that. Uh, was about to hook up my Wii U up so I could start uh, doing my Wii U games like Paper Mario Color Splash. I'm literally now determined to put Mass Effect Andromeda to the side because I've been playing that. I spent the whole day doing side quests for that game. I'm ready to put that game to the side and focus way on my Wii U games. I want to get through my collection uh, because I just got a big backlog and pretty much I'm don't have nothing to really play on Sony besides Uncharted 4 at this time. Uh, I do want to beat that before uh, The Lost Legacy comes out um, later on this month. Um, but I'm getting ready to turn out, uh, to turn back on my Wii U. And if things work out, everybody, I might have to my Nintendo Switch by this Friday. So, yes, uh, I'll be ready to start on games for that system. Awesome. But yeah, just right now, Nintendo Vice is just Dragon Quest 8. And then, kind of, uh, this week, I'm going to be on my Wii U doing a lot of gaming on there. Because I was just I was just craving to get my Rise session. I then, But Andromeda just took up my time. Uh, oh, and Gears of War 4 uh, playing in uh, Ikaruga. We but, still got to play that Gears of War 4 together. Just saying. I know. Yes. We, gotta, we need to live stream some Horde mode or something at some point. That'd be fun. Uh, I- Pot play. Yeah, to... there uh, we go, man. Ray, I'm really sorry that I, I went to bed last night because I was so tired. I wanted to play a game so bad, and I was like, I'm gonna fall asleep. Uh, Ray and I were supposed to play Overwatch last night, and I, and I, I heard you played with with Brian a little bit. Yeah, we played with Brian a little bit because he ends up jumping on toward the end of our night. Like we were already playing for like an hour or whatever or two. Yeah. Usually, so he usually jumps on like eleven, and then we're like, "Oh, we've been playing this for like two and a half hours. We're kind of done." Yeah. So I feel kind of bad, but we were wrecking face. His Widowmaker is actually really good. He's I know. a good he's Widowmaker. Been, he's been playing Widowmaker for like three weeks straight. He w- he refuses to change characters. Not like every like month or so, he'll go in and change like try a character that he doesn't play as and try to get really good with that character. And yeah, we were uh we played some Overwatch on Wednesday together and I was playing Lucio and uh he was playing Widowmaker and like we were like I was staying back and healing like the team and like we had some people who didn't really know what they were doing. There's there's seems to be more of that in quick play than ranked but like he was hanging back as Widowmaker and like I was up healing people and like he would get some body shots on people and I would finish them off with Lucio and like I was <laughs> I was getting like silvers and eliminations with Lucio <laughs> 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 no, Lucio like, can do some damage though I like, seriously, can do uh, some damage. I had this really good shot though of like I, w- I forget what the map's called but it was like the Greek Isle where like is it the well in the, the middle? The, no, it's not the well. It's the other one with the point in the middle. 
but like there's three doors. There's one, and they all go out to stairs that go underneath the point, but okay. you can also get yeah. pushed off. Dude, some tracer was running around the door and came in and started shooting me, and I was shooting her, and she she went back through the other door, like blinked through the, the other lighthouse door. one. The yeah. lighthouse one yeah. that's in, on the edge? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, she came through the door. She blinked through the other door, and I shot her off the edge. It was really cool. It made me feel really good. <laughs> nice. And I did yeah, the same thing. Actually... I did the same thing to a Roadhog that came through the door, and I, I always let Roadhog hook me when I'm Lucio because since they kind of nerfed nerfed him, like I can get the, the shot off before. The he, you can get the boop off? Yeah, before so he shoots a shotgun, yeah. and it just it feels really good to knock Roadhog off the ledge because you just like, I know what you're trying to do. <laughs> so, oh, Overwatch is good. It's good. Yeah. <sighs> I started playing D.Va in Overwatch uh, because Panda... Uh, she's like, I'm a good diva, so I'm like, I'm all right, diva. So now I've been trying to play better, so I can show her that I can be a good diva or whatever. Um, so I've been actually keeping all my highlights and stuff from that and screenshots. Um, with uh, with that, I actually have something Nintendo related that I played this week. Whoa, what? I actually, Fire I busted Emblem. It. Well, other than no, I beat Fire Emblem already. We talked about this last week. I yes. um, so. I actually took my <laughs> Super Nintendo out of the box. Yeah. Right out of the closet. And then we went on a little bit of a rare uh, game fest. We played Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Country 2, Donkey Kong Country 3, and Killer Instinct. <laughs> yes! Like, ultra combo! <laughs> Dude, yes. I, I missed that game. That game was so fun. Mm. Killer Instinct. Well, that was when I was really, like, Super Nintendo was, like, when I was in the thick of the fighting game scene. Because I was, uh. like, I wanted to become a pro Street Fighter 2 fighter. Like, I wanted to be a pro Street Fighter 2 player, and I was semi-pro, and I was doing, like, regional stuff around Chicago when I, when I lived back home. Uh-huh. And, um, like, I've, Corey's heard this story before. I'd go to the arcade, and I'd talk my dad into letting me stay there for a couple hours, and i put my quarters down to the machine. I'd get my turn, and I'd proceed to wreck everyone that wants to keep, keep coming up. I'm taking all fighters. As they're coming up, they're putting their quarters on the machines, and I'm just wrecking people for two, three hours at a time. Then my dad's like, we got to go. I'm like, but I haven't lost yet, Dad. Let me play. Let me play. He's like, no, we got to go. I'm like, oh. No. <laughs> was, it, uh, was it World Warriors or uh, Championship? It was this, It was this, the, uh, the World Warrior, just World. regular Street Fighter 2. It was on the arcades. And that's why I, I like the arcade stick, because that's why I used to get. And then at home, I'd play on the pad, and I'd be all right. But I would just feel at home, like on the stick. It, it, it's so fe- it's so funny when it comes to the Street, Fa- uh, Street Fighter 2 in the arcade. Only seen the Champion Edition. World, no. the, uh, World Warriors one is only on Super Nintendo that I've ever played. I've yeah. never seen it as an arcade game. I've seen it as the arcade, and then we got the championship edition, and then we got the the Super Street Fighter. Then, I, like after a while, the different arcades I would go to, mm-hmm. each one had a different version because they had like the, the 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 new version with the new characters and stuff in it. Yeah, like Fei Long, um, T, and um, oh, the Super Street T-Hawk. Fighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah Super that Street one Fighter. we had. Uh, we had the hack version before they did the Turbo one. Somehow, someone was able to put the uh, hack version of Street Fighter into our like our mall arcade, Aladdin's Castle. Ah, love that. Aladdin's yeah, that's what, that was the same thing. Yeah, Aladdin's Castle was the, was you go to the mall and then you go to the arcade. And it's Aladdin's Castle. Yeah. The uh yeah the octagon uh token with the little lamp in the middle. Yeah. Ah, dude, we had the arcade and then we had this uh gyro or gyro whatever y'all want to say i say gyro yeah, that's Gyro. it's gyros <laughs> the gyros it's gyros <laughs> <laughs> we had we had a, a gyro restaurant right next to our arcade had the best gyros and cheeseburgers and because they did they weren't like uh coke they did pepsi and it just was so right best fries and everything and you we used to able to get all of that for like four dollars and 75 cent yep greek restaurants are the best like (laughs) that's one thing i miss about living back home like in the midwest is like you had those really good like mom and pop restaurants that you could yes like we have good ones here in new york but usually they're pizza restaurants or like they're Italian, and it's like no. Sometimes I just want a gyro and some fries or something like that. Like I want something good. There's a guy that I work with when I do live events and stuff like that. Like when we do the Madden tailgate here, uh-huh. he has a, he has a gyro cart. Like he owns a Mediterranean restaurant and a Greek restaurant in Utica, but he has a cart and he'll bring it wherever you want him to go. So every time we have the Madden tailgate thing, 
he's there with the Yiro cart and he'll come sell Yiro's and stuff like that. Hot dogs, hamburgers, oh, all that nice. kind of stuff. Oh, man, it's good. I, I have, dude, I eat so much when he's around. He's like another <laughs> one. I was like, yes. Another one. Like, I won't eat for two days after that because I'm so full and whatever. But, <laughs> yeah, I get my yeah. fill when I'm hungry. And, and see, I have, I, for me, I have to see the rotating meat. And yep. then I have to see them cut it off. Be like, yes, yes, give me that good old meat. <laughs> you tired? You tired? You tired, Corey? Yeah, man, it's been a long weekend. I'm sorry. It's... Yeah, but then I played Overwatch yesterday, wrecking fools and Lucio Ball with muffins. Nice. Like, yeah, because the other night we hopped on after after everything, and I was just like, hey, say what's up to Corey because I'm gonna be a minute, whatever. And then you, you logged off, and I'm like, what happened to Corey? Like, he had to go. I'm like, well, that sucks, Corey. <laughs> It was getting really loud in there. I was trying to find something in Horizon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So well, sorry. See, that's one thing that people get they get upset about. Like I, when I come into a party because I have so many friends, I just leave it open. I'm just like, whatever. If you guys want to come talk, hang out. As long as we're not bothering you, you're not bothering us. You're well more than welcome to come hang out and you know just chill and talk video games or whatever. Yeah. It's it's been like that since Destiny back in back when we started the community oh, stuff for Phoenix Overdrive. So don't, br- don't bring up Destiny. I'm really scared about how my life's going to end when that game I'm, comes out. Uh, 50, I'm, 50 I'm, hours I'm of uh, content rigid. they said. 50 hour, 50 hours of single player content. 50 or story that's it? content, I should. 50 hours plus of, of oh. story content. Well, Mind like, you, how long how long was the original Destiny like Five hours, six hours to play through the first story, maybe not even. No, well, of well, another Destiny. No. Well, I, I don't know. I'd say not, like if you include all the strikes and the raids, and like I probably well, remember I'd probably we didn't say, get. Like, remember we didn't get the raid right away. We didn't get Vault of Glass right away when Destiny came out originally. We got it a few weeks after. So to play from, you know, the first story mission to the end of the story mission. It was probably like five, six hours, maybe, and then you play I the strikes and stuff like that. Longer. Oh, the campaign! The campaign for Vanilla Destiny was like was like six hours, maybe. Yeah. And like, mm-hmm. if you even it- if you put House of Wolves and Dark Below in on it, like it was it was probably only not even still ten. less than like it wasn't even, even ten, ten hours. Even or, even when even when you're underpowered, like just going through it, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because every, you got to remember when you first play through it regularly. It scales to your level, so like you're at level, and then see that was a problem with Destiny, uh, because I should have been at certain levels. Like I would, I would go it's to because a they want point. they want you to go out and and try different right. things to level up. They want you to grind. So did they? So did they change it when? Uh, by no. the time I got it, no, what they, added they was changed they added it. Heroics. They changed they added it. Heroics. Well, what they did was like they changed it for the Taken King too, like. Everything before the Taken King stayed the same, and then with the uh-huh. Taken King, they 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 did a better job of making sure you were at the correct level. But it still was like sometimes it was yeah, off. It was so I mean, I just yeah, remember but- a lot of people, a lot of people, including me, like just stashed our bounties and traded them all in to be level forty when the Taken King came out. It was, that yep. was like well, a big thing. Was- Everyone's like, "Save your bounty, save your bounty, save your bounties," because the leveling's changing. Yeah, because then they gave us the XP boost too. Remember? Yeah. For, if I mean, you it was yeah. it was weird. it was weird because I would fi- I think I did like the fourth or fifth mission, and I kind of was like at level seven. But the next mi- the next mission was like le- you had to be at level nine for the story, and I'm like, yeah. wait, what the heck? I'm no, like, but you have to remember in Destiny. Yeah, you have to remember in Destiny though. You alternated between the sections, the first couple sections, like you were on Earth. Yeah, and then you went to and v- then no. you, went to, you went to the moon. Yeah, you went to the moon, then you went to Venus, then you went back to the moon, then you went to Mars. No, but but some yeah. some of the some of the levels then if when you're on that planet, like if I'm on the moon, because I think the moon is like the first part you go to at the Earth or something, or yeah, is it Earth? Earth? There's it's like two or three missions on Earth, then there's the strike, and then you go to the see, moon. See, that's the thing about it. I think because I didn't do no strike, I was going to oh. the, going through the mm-hmm. story. They jump yeah, because in levels. there's there's one of the, one of the story missions requires you to team up and do a strike. See, and yeah. that and will does, level you up to take to down nine. the spider tank. Yep. Yeah. See, and guess what? No, they didn't. That they, spider that, tank. They didn't. They didn't tell me that. Like they didn't I offer know. that. I know uh, they don't. It, it's not very good at communicating what you're really supposed to do. But what you're okay. supposed to be doing, yeah. And Remember, so maybe that's probably why I got confused. That's why I seen that jump for it. Yeah, between the alpha and the beta, I killed that spider tank so many times. I know, dude. 
I probably <laughs> killed that spider tank probably a hundred times. And like, so I know, gosh, I know this is a Nintendo pod- podcast. I'm sorry, guys. But like, we were, there's not really a lot of news anyway. Like, no, but like, okay. So I posted on Facebook the other day that I deleted Destiny, finally deleted Destiny 1 to make space for uh, Hellblade, which is really good, by the way. Hellblade is amazing. Oh my gosh, Hellblade's amazing. Uh, and Pyre and Sundered and a couple other games. Oh, God of War 3 mm-hmm. remastered because that game is freaking amazing. Gosh, God of War so good. I miss God of War really a lot. I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, and I posted, I was like, I need six trophies for the Platinum. And one of them is Flawless Raider. And I'm sad to delete Destiny without getting the Platinum, but I'm excited for Destiny 2. And like all these people out of the woodwork were like, I'm still playing. You could have asked yeah. me. I'm like, I didn't know everybody was still playing. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah no, I like know Frank so many Clark, people still playing. Frank Clark was like, why don't you ask me to play with you, bro? And I was like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing, I'm still doing one. I, I, it's just, I think one plays better than four to me, control wise. So oh. I'm sticking to one. What? Uh, one what? For Destiny. Wait. What? Xbox One. Oh, for Destiny. Xbox One. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> One against four. See, this comes from me that that I have uh, preferred the preferred controller for me is the DualShock, just because I have carpal tunnel in my hands, and some days my hands are just terrible and they hurt and they ache and start you know sharp stabbing pains. The DualShock Four tends to make my hands feel more comfortable and I don't have as much pain. I mean, there are times t- sometimes where after I get done playing, I'm just like, man. Ah, my hands hurt. Like sometimes, but some- the Xbox controller makes my hand hurt so bad. Like right off, I could only play like half hour to an hour at a time before I'm like, yeah, I can't play anymore. Yeah, yeah I, probably because I got used to the Xbox One controller. Um, I think when I was doing the Destiny Two beta with the PS4 controller, I it, this, my wrist started hurting. I'm just like, yeah, this. this it's is- because you hold them differently. But my thing is, yeah. is like, even playing, I played, I played 360 most of the time over PS3. And stuff like that, but now it's just like my hands are. I mean, I had the Xbox Elite controller, which was actually very comfortable, but still, the the DualShock Four is right still at home for me. I don't know why it is that way, but um, but I do like uh, a friend of mine. Um, I let I got to play their Switch. I like that Pro controller though. Yeah, that Pro, Pro controller. Yeah. Nice. The thing <laughs> though is, like when I play Switch in handheld mode, like I'm starting to get pains like right here in my thumb, like. Yeah, all the way down into my wrist and because yeah, like because like yeah. my, my thumbs i have to spread my thumbs far out like you know an unnatural position because the sticks are lined up above the buttons instead of staggered yeah. a little bit and like mm-hmm. my hands like my hands my wife's home hi wife welcome to the show hi Corey's wife hi Sana. hi mrs derrick <laughs> ed said hi mrs derrick <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, she's married, so you gotta uh, announce it properly, Mrs. Derek. Are you still jelly about Sana's YouTube following? Yeah, I am. Her YouTube page <laughs> is getting more subscribers than us, and it's making me upset. <laughs> it's because it's because she's a woman. People enjoy watching. No, she's ready. She's ready to help everybody in the caregiving uh, space. Yeah, it, it's because more she's people care me about. The guy in the hallway. Because the more people care about caregiving and stuff like that than video games, you know. So I know, I know. Plus, they oh. they have like a following anyway, like their caregiving stuff. But like, what are we talking about? Oh, uh, Nintendo Switch handheld yeah. mode, Switch mode. Yeah, but like that Pro controller is real nice, and like you can use it on your PC. So whenever I yeah. get a graphics card, maybe I'll use that. <laughs> Still don't have a graphics yeah, card. Um, yeah, yeah. I played the Switch in handheld mode. My brother let me check it out. It's not comfortable for me. No, I wish the they. I wish thing, it's like. Ah, I hope they. I, I hope they uh, make uh, different Joy Cons. Like honestly, yeah. I hope they make. Like after like a year or something, if like Virtual Console takes off, or they they have like. A decent number of Joy Cons that like will adhere to different people's hand sizes because like yeah did you see yeah yeah Corey needs the joy con xl version (laughs) yeah Yeah. and you know what it will sell it literally (laughs) will sell yeah except for the people that complain that have like tiny baby hands they're like the controllers are too big i'm like how how are the how are they too big like that (laughs) that's the size of the unit is fine it's just the sticks i wish were like 
I don't know. Maybe I'm, a little taller. I think that would help too if they were a little. Not even that. Little I just, more, I wish more they were, in. I wish uh, they were moved in. in. <laughs> like yeah, tucked in some, and maybe a little taller. Yeah. Because because look, this is actually this is I use stick things for my PS4 to help with my carpal tunnel. So one is actually really short, and then the other one's really tall. So the taller stick actually makes my right hand. It, it doesn't make my right hand hurt as bad. Ah. Uh. Video game. And this is video game ergonomics brought to you by Nintendo Power Block. Was that the uh, was that the Call of Duty uh no controller? No, it's the Uncharted one, the Uncharted blue one. I have uh, it. I have that same know, controller. You want to know why? For the way that it look that it looks the color it look, has the color three Call of Duty orange, three colors. Yeah, with yeah. the orange. What did you think? Yeah. 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 <sighs> I have a set of white sticks too that that are like that, different texture, but um. But yeah, no, that was that, yeah. But I got to play some Super Smash Brothers because now I'm like that competitive edge in me. Because like I told you guys last week, Panda like kicked my butt at Smash Brothers. Mm -hmm. So now the competitive edge in me is like, no, I need to get better. I need to train because I I want to fight back. I don't want to get trounced again <laughs> next time we play. Because I was like, I, I told her I was like, hey, I, I mentioned you on the episode. She goes, you did. I was like, yeah, how you kicked my butt at Smash Brothers. She goes, where? And it was like first five minutes of the show. I was like, it's like first five minutes of the show. Just just go there and listen. I actually watched the whole thing. <laughs> but yeah, yes. no, it was one of those things where it didn't feel good to lose. Like when you when you're a competitive fighter player like that, uh -huh. and I I never really saw Smash as a competitive fighter, but now that people are surrounding it and it's getting stuff like at Evo and stuff like that. And I was like, well, Smash is a competitive fighter. It's, <laughs> you know? it's, we it's weird when you make a Nintendo game something that it's not supposed to be. Yeah, it's supposed to be a fun like party game where you just yeah. bring all the Nintendo characters together and you just beat the crap out of each other. <laughs> right. Like, and that's even with Splatoon. It's just like the game is about painting but people still play it kind of almost, I want to say like Overwatch, uh, like a arena based shooter. Like people keep playing it like that. I'm like, no, you got to cover ground. <laughs> it's not about, yeah, it's not about always going to get the yeah, play. Knock, knocking the player out. You got to make sure you cover more ground strategically. That's the one thing, Corey, I don't know if you saw me tag you in Phoenix Overdrive Nation today because uh, Trevor was like, I don't know what to do in Splatoon. I'm like, uh, talk to Corey because I have no idea what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like I played the you paint the floor. You. That's all like, you yeah, do. Like, like I mean, I, that's what I did with my girls. But you know what I mean. Like I never really had a great experience with Splatoon like that because I only played online like once or twice. Mm -hmm. Like it was uh. never anything. But usually I'm playing with my girls, so I just you know kind of hold back and not beat them, so that way they can <laughs> like yeah, I beat Dad in a video game. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah, it, well, it's weird. Uh, like people were playing Breath of the Wild. I think now with this hard mode, people are playing it like Dark Souls and Bloodborne, and it's kind of weird to see that. Um, it, I, I guess, speed running is another way. If you yeah. see it like that, like a game like Mario Brothers is not supposed to be done in in a speedway kind of sense. Like <laughs> that takes like good skill and dedication. If you don't, if you don't use no kind of cheap equipment or software, I'm assuming. No, to be fair, though, the original Legend of Zelda and Zelda 2 were among the hardest games I've, pro I've probably ever played because they are just not they're not user friendly at all. Mm -hmm. You're just have you played the original? Have you gone back and tried to play the original Legend of Zelda recently? Yeah, I beat it. I, okay. I beat it. Like in, but it's not it's not easy. It's not easy. It actually it, was easy. Well, it was it okay? Well, then maybe Ed's better at video games than I am <laughs> because no, I went back and played the original it, Zelda and I was just like. Yeah, how did I beat this the first time as, like, a nine-year-old kid? I don't know how the heck I did it. No. Anything <laughs> anything from the NES era except for, like, Super Mario Bros. 3 or 2 or, like, unplayable Ninja for Gaiden. me. It's just, like, so everything's Ninja... super hard. What was it? What was the other Ninja? It wasn't Ninja Gaiden, was it? Yeah, that was Ninja really Gaiden and Ninja Gaiden 2. Yeah. Okay, yeah. What was, wasn't there another Ninja game? Uh, Shinobi? Yeah, Shinobi. That's the one I'm thinking. Shinobi's bad. Oh, man, I tried to go back and play that not too long ago. Okay, so <laughs> this is a story about Shinobi. I okay. beat it on NES before I beat it on the Sega Master System. Because there's a section where you got four uh, like four goblin-looking things, and they're coming to you, and it's like electric kind of uh, side thing. I know, I know the part you're talking about. Yeah. Yes. So you have to defeat all of them, and then you have to fight like some eye thing with like your stars and stuff. The Gorgon so thing, I, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, so I beat it uh, because it was Tiggin uh, when it came out for Nintendo. That was, uh, I think, Atari? Or was it Namco? It was one of them that they kind of uh, co- they was it, it was able to break the code on the NES and able to put the carts out for it. That's how Tetris became like uh, a very expensive cart. I think it's Atari. Sega was the developer for Shinobi. No, but who did Tengen for NES? T E N G N. I think that was Namco. If it wasn't Namco, it had to be Atari. Yeah, oh, back when the 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 publishing houses had had their second companies and stuff like that in order yeah. to, uh, it was Atari. Okay, so they because they did the coding for Ninja Gaiden for uh Super Nintendo for uh for the NES, but I ended up beating it for Nintendo first before I beat it for the Sega Master System, uh, a Shinobi, and that's the only Shinobi game that I played because the arcade one was too hard for me, of course, um, and I didn't play Shinobi two and I didn't play Shinobi three on the Super on uh, the Sega Genesis. Yeah, but like Ninja Gaiden, uh, I beat that actually on the Super Nintendo with the Game Genie. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they had the cheat. I, I cheated. Cheat so hard. I because I got to uh, I I got far in that game. I always get to almost the last level. To almost the last level, like I only have like one more level to do to before I get to the final boss. And I will always die. And I was just like, oh, infinite continues. Like, and I will practice my tail off and just wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah, you you guys know the history about all that, the, the secondary publishing companies for Nintendo. Yeah. Because cartridges were so expensive and they would only get so much allotted, they would go create like that's why, ghost companies. That's why Konami <laughs> created Ultra so they could awesome. put more games out. Yep. <laughs> I, is it? I think it's Tengen. It's somebody who Tengen went in Nintendo. Or it was uh, who stuck into Tengen. Nintendo, found out they how they make their games, so they coding and stuff and everything, and then left. Like th- they were saying, he was a lawyer or something. Was able to find like their sheets, and then left and started making their own games. Like, uh, like we finding a way around because uh, those the Christian games, uh, like Noah's Ark. Like how bad those games were. Like you couldn't find them at stores. You only could find them at like Christian bookstores. No, by video store. You can find them at the video stores too because they would really? buy a cow- Yeah. Hey. We had uh, what the heck was it? It wasn't. It wasn't block box office video. You remember box office video? See, we didn't have box office. We only had Blockbuster and uh, See, uh, Video had- Express. Yeah, we had fam. We had the Video Express too, but um. But yeah, we had we had box office video, um, and then you remember Hollywood Video too was a thing for a while, yes. and then they died. Corey's like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. He's just kind of got a look on his face, like. No, hmm. I rem- we had Blockbuster and Hollywood Video. Yeah, I just always bought. Well, my parents always just bought me my games. <laughs> I never really See, went and rented. We get our video our tradition like was we nights. would rent we would rent a game like every two weeks on Friday we'd have. Pizza for dinner, we'd get a movie, and we'd get a game. And then my parents would get a movie that they wanted to watch. And then most of the time, my dad would end up getting like some kind of martial arts movie for the movie him and my mom would watch. We would get a family movie, and then we would get a video game. And usually, depending on what we were playing or whatever. And then there was one point in time when Chrono Trigger came out. Yes. We rented, we rented that game literally like six months in a row like every two weeks we would re- re-up our renewal for it to yes. play through because we didn't, uh, we didn't buy it <laughs> we did that for, me and my brother did that for nba gym because we were staying for our grandma and we called blockbuster and we told like we told our mom like we have to go we had to get it because it had just dropped that friday uh and everybody was looking for it and our blockbuster had one more copy and we uh we was able to get it and we spent our our whole weekend at our grandma house playing uh NBA jam or something downtown nice. he's on fire <laughs> yeah me and my best Ooh, friend <laughs> me, me and my best friend we that's how we uh was so good at zombie ate my neighbors cuz we oh, rented the game and we I played love that game. I, yeah and then we both ended up buying that game for uh Corey, did you play that game? Christmas. What, Zombies Ate My Neighbors? Yeah. I played it on Super Nintendo, then I played it on Sega. I'm like, this is terrible on Sega. Well, that's, <laughs> the Genesis version sucks. Like, <laughs> it's... 
I was just like, I remember like, this garbage? I remember I wanted NBA Jam really bad. And like, <laughs> my parents bought me this Sega Genesis game called Barkley Shut Up and Jam. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is an NBA Jam. <laughs> And like, Shaq it, no, oh, dude, oh, Shaq, Shaq Fu's amazing. Oh. I can't wait to get my free copy on Switch. Uh, right, right. Why did you bring that up? You Shaq know Fu's the best. <laughs> Shaq Fu's the best. Shaq Fu is the best. Please we check can, out past episodes. Call, uh, we can just call this nostal- nostalgia factor. <laughs> but like, well, I, my parents bought me Barkley Shut Up and Jam, and like, I just remember picking the the people with like. I don't know the the best stats because like I didn't know who any of these people were and it turns out they were all like fake players except for Charles Barkley. And like yeah. I never I didn't even pick Charles Barkley because he wasn't like, really good at anything. He just is just good at knocking people over. And like I picked I always picked this guy named Sweet P because he was sweet at shooting threes. <laughs> and uh there's somebody <laughs> shoot it, why mm. at least you you had that. I had uh Pat Riley basketball. I had Pat Riley basketball too. No, Bill Lambeer's combat basketball. Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, uh, that game was uttered. The, power, uh, the power-ups on the field, like you could shoot like a freaking eight-pointer from the other side of the field with the power-up. Yeah, no. Uh, Missiles my, and stuff blow the players up. My parents always bought me the generic sports versions of sports games. Like, I wanted Madden, and my parents got me Joe Montana football. And, like, all you had to do was do the spin move and you scored a touchdown every time. You're like, oh, well. Yeah, that's like Tech Mobile. Yeah. You always play as freaking, freaking Bojack. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. it was the same I thing. It was the same thing. I beat my brother in Joe Montana once, and he always wanted his rematch, and I would never give it to him. I ended up <laughs> it. But I got my tail beaten. Um, actually, Capcom had a football game for Super Nintendo. I was just like, when did y'all start making sports games? See, Cal Ripken, dude, all, there were all kinds of ripoff games. Like, there was Cal Ripken's Triple Play Baseball. Or, no, Roger Clemens, Roger Clemens had a game. Cal Ripken had a game. Konami had Run a Gun and End the Zone for uh, PlayStation when it first came out. You guys remember the Mutant League games? Yes. <laughs> yes. We're not talking anything new. We're just talking about old old Nintendo and old, old retro games now. <laughs> I mean, but but, you know, like... Because we, we're talking about rent to play, like renting games, like those was our demos at the time, and you had a limited time. Like if you could be the gay, like rent a Stimpy within, you know, that day, then yeah, I'm like. But if that game was so good, whether you finish it or not, it was going to be a birthday gift or maybe a Christmas gift. Like you was going to have that one in your collection. Yep. And if and if like with a lot of a lot of first party Nintendo games, I've never rented. I've never rented a first party Nintendo game. I've I, rented I, them, but it was always hard because those are the most sought after games because they were always usually the better games other than the bootleg stuff that we've been talking about, like you know your run and gun, <laughs> and your Joe Montana stuff like that. Yeah, no, we used to get yeah used to get the the good first party games or the really good like third party games. And like I remember playing Metal Gear, and I was just like, "What the hell is this game?" Like, yes. I, was just, I was just like, "This is weird." And then I played the other, I played all the rest of them, and I was just like, "Okay, still makes no sense whatsoever." That's kind of that's that was kind of how Buying the Commando was for me. Like, I actually beat Buying the Commando in one sitting, that and Rygar, and because I didn't have no instruction booklet, you know. Act Razor was that for me. I was I was killing Act Razor. Oh, Act Razor is the bomb, big. I love that soundtrack. Like, uh, so Corey's good. like I. I- <laughs> Corey's just kind of like, okay, Ray and Ed took over the show. No, I'm just Sorry. listening. I'm no so, um. Uh, do you remember? Remember when we got all the bad mascot port, the bad mascot games? Arrow the got, Acrobat like, spot, was the best. Arrow the Acrobat. You got, got a got sequel. Gex. <laughs> yeah, no, it did. Yeah, I do. That was actually one of the first See? games like, I remember running on Super Nintendo was Arrow the Acrobat. My favorite, but, my favorite non Mario or, Nint- or Sonic like mascot game was uh, Rocket Knight Adventure. For second yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh. yes. That was amazing. Oh I my gosh! And I was like, I've never seen or heard from this game again. And then, like, three or four years ago, they released a, <laughs> a remake on Xbox Live Arcade. No, they yeah. did a sequel. Did they? Yeah, I, did, I never. Rockstar. 
Oh, yeah. oh we'll see. Yeah. Rocket Knight yeah. is what I want. I don't care about these fake names. Well, Sparks, where Sparkster was his name. So when uh, Rocket, Knight, R- Rocket Knight Adventure came two came out, they changed it to Sparkster because they ended up putting it on Super Nintendo. Awesome. Yeah, but we got we got all kinds of fun stuff. Remember Yo Noid and Cool Spot? Ugh, I I could not stand Yo Noid. I somehow ended up watching a cartoon. I mean, watching that TV and ended up having to throw up. And was just like, <laughs> uh, I can't. I remember when I first played Kirby. I was just like, what the heck is this? And I never. I didn't play Kirby too. I fell in love. I I fell in love with Kirby though. Kirby Kirby grew on me. And then we got um, what the heck was it? Uh, See, I watched was Kirby. All kinds- yeah, Kirby Mega Man games were also a favorite of mine. I love the Mega Man games. Like I those have never, were... I I I got the Legacy Collection for PS4. Um, I need to be four to six. Well, actually four to seven. Only ones that I beat it was one, one, two, three, and eight. I never beat nine to ten, uh, which I gotta go buy. Uh, I gotta go buy a Legacy Collection too. I need to buy that. Yeah, and then and then there ever, was. A, I don't think I've ever beaten a Mega Man game. I just I just the, like to play them. Yeah, the the beat 'em up games like your Double Dragon, your Streets of Rage, yeah, Turtles in Time. Yeah, yes. Tony and his Turtles in Time always best I, I, best start, best game ever made. It's a great see beat 'em must I I put street I put Streets of Rage two over Turtles in Time. Like I trust me, I love throwing those uh. What? Throwing those uh, Foot Clan into like the the screen. Turtles the Street- in Time was the game, bro. I'm sorry, but Turtles in Time was the, the Super Nintendo Street- version, not the stupid arcade version. Yeah, oh. not the arcade version. Yeah, uh, Streets of Rage two because of that. Also, that that soundtrack is still amazing, and uh, I I guess I just. It was just a game that I just was able to replay over and over, just almost like Turtles in Time. But I, I like I think I played more of Streets of Rage two did not play Turtles of Time, and I wish uh, TMNT would come back. I wish they would release that. Battle like, Toads. Battle Toads sucked. Oh, Battle Toads was hard. That's why it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ed actually thinks video game is hard. <laughs> like. No, that game was like increasingly difficult. Then you had, uh, then you had, I mean, so many good RPGs though back in that time on the NES and the SNES time frame. See, the NES RPGs I didn't really play. I, it was always platformers or beat 'em ups for it, or even shooters like Contra and stuff, or even like R type or. Uh, Dude, your Dragon Warrior games and then the, the original Final Fantasy and stuff. I didn't play. Dra- I didn't play Dragon Warrior two. I think one or two came up for Game Boy. Like I didn't. I like even Final Fantasy. My first Final Fantasy was Final Fantasy three. Your was Ultimas. It- at your Ultimas and yeah, Fezanadu. Oh, the, oh, <sighs> come on, man! You're killing me, Ed. Well, I I was uh, well because in my household, like uh, I was Nintendo. My brother was Sega, and anything that I jumped out of from Nintendo was a TurboGrafx-16. Bunk, <laughs> and, and that literally was the reason. Was bunk. And then getting Dungeon Explorer, uh, Vigilante, which was the uh, arcade game that came to the uh, Turbo Graphics 16, um, Splatterhouse, um, like, like the Turbo Graphics 16 was like what people see the Switch is to like their PlayStation. It was like a complimentary, complimentary system. And so I'm like, hey, if I can get these good games for like 20 bucks, heck yeah, on the Hue card. <laughs> oh man wow okay well now that we're 40 this has minutes been into the show <laughs> nostalgia minute brought to you by nintendo pow block <laughs> uh, ed do we have any news this week really um i, I want to be clear we're recording a day earlier than we usually record so if anything happens between sunday and tuesday We'll cover it on Friday, right? That's how that works, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, Podcasts. Oh. Woo. Uh, 
the only news that I kind of have out right now, um, Ryan producer explains why the switch port is coming so much later. Um, they just talking about uh, some of the decisions that they made that they thought were going to be right and wrong until they ended up working on it. Uh, and they didn't actually uh, begin work on uh, the switch SKU uh, until August of 2016. So kind of when they were working on uh, Xbox and the PC version and PlayStation, uh, when it came to August, that's when they started working on the switch version. Um, uh, the people who are making it with Tequila Works is uh, Tantalus. Um, uh, they're working together and uh, optimizing it and everything. But they are going to add an achievement system so that it almost feels like you're playing the Xbox One and PlayStation ports. So they want to be fair across all systems about it. How it's going to work, they haven't they haven't explained just yet. Um, but like I said, uh, this game will be out in November. Um, but if you guys don't want to wait for the Switch version, you can get it out for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Um, I really am going to double dip on this game uh, because that soundtrack is amazing. And I do want to have a discussion on Rhyme because I think it's one. I, I think it's a game that needs to be discussed uh, that fall, kind of almost follows in the line of like Hellblade and... Uh, like kind of having having that discussion uh with it um it, it's been a fantastical year of mu- of music and g- independent games and i can't wait to hear the music in hell Bay. but yeah for rhyme uh november uh you guys can read more of that on nintendo life and uh they got a fuller story about uh, more on their official uh, site about the game. So you guys can check that out. But that's pretty much all the news. Uh, there is a little other thing that's that kind of happened over the weekend, but we're not going to uh, touch on that. So Which which yeah. little thing? Because it's uh, the thing I'm thinking about. The the Switch getting, or Nintendo getting sued for the detachable yeah, controllers. That, I was going to actually yeah, bring that up because uh, I've seen it on uh, Mashable uh, the Verge and Gaze Mondo, I want to say. One, well, you know, it's it's all over um, those things right now. So that's why I was going to bring up, like, hey, yeah, but what's that, up with this? That company, like, I was, oh, man, I didn't really want to talk about this, but I guess we're going to. But um, we don't have the, to. Well, like, the thing is, is, like, their controllers are set up more like it's like a cradle for a tablet, whereas, like, the switch is two separate yeah. controllers. The Joy Cons are separate. Yeah, and like I was, I was just looking at this and like, yeah, they make detachable controllers for like iPads and stuff, but they're like, I don't know, they're it's more it, they're more cr- a cradle, and the controller is attached by this thing either underneath and the tablet slides in, or like there's this little like hook, thing hook that, in the back right. yeah. that, and, and it just it, clamps it together. And it doesn't work. Unless you actually attach it to a mobile tablet, uh-huh. whereas the Switch controllers is always connected to the system. You could take it off and still play it Bluetooth wise. Right. Like it's always connected to the system. You know, uh, and they brought this thing out in 2015. So because of Switch being popular, why do they want to? Uh, why do they want to sue them now? It um, actually goes back to 2013. Yeah. Oh okay. really? 2013. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I heard to uh, 2015 about it. I I guess for that controller or anything, but I don't think they're gonna. I don't think they're gonna get anything out of it. No, because I think this is more of an attention-seeking thing, and like a Nintendo will either settle with them or be like nothing's gonna come of it, and it's just gonna be. I like... think Nintendo's gonna settle just because they don't want the damage to the Switch brand, right? Because and they're they're and it. And, I, but even yeah. if they do fight it, it's going to be like, remember that Wii lawsuit that just got settled last year about the motion controls and Nintendo yeah, ended that up was winning? Like and 11 like, years ago? Yeah. I'm like, who even cares about that at this point? Like, <laughs> so. Yeah, I don't think they're going to settle with them because the thing about it is, is that they're two different patterns. And you actually need, for them, they need another party for their for their item to actually work because yeah this is all proprietary thing for nintendo like the tablets proprietary the controllers are proprietary like for this like yeah their technology is proprietary but you need a third party device to make it right and then i think they're just suing them so they could get some money recognition because 
how many people knew that they were a company and even knew this product was at? They're not selling it at Best Buy or Target. Or I, I, I knew that it was there because it was the Wikipad thing. Hmm. That was the device. It was the Wikipad. Which they first uh, intentionally meant to launch in 2012, and then they event- then they eventually launched it in 2013. And I remember seeing it. Um, yeah, it was it. It's it's just basically um, the interface can be kind of looked at similarly, but the only thing that's going to really, I mean, it could very well, you know. Um, it's really going to be up to it. If the courts allow it to continue, a judge is basically going to look at the patents and the designs and this, that, the other. They'll mm-hmm. look at it and they'll be like, oh, well, this is similar. Or this isn't similar. If it's similar enough and Nintendo chooses not to settle, then Nintendo may be liable to give them royalties for every Switch that they sell. I don't think so. Because the thing about it is, is that... Uh, you have to look at litigation, though. It could go either way. Even yeah. though we think it's a shot in the dark, whatever, but... We've seen weirder things like the whole thing with Apple and Samsung. Remember, it looked like Apple had no shot in hell to, to take down Samsung, but they did. Stranger or, things have happened. They made a dent in Samsung again. Samsung came back. <laughs> which is really funny. For that, tech, for that technology. Yeah. Amazon uses Samsung screens for their phone, which is really funny. Uh, but that's what I mean. It's one of those things like we never know how it's going to go. Um, right. It's just going to be one of those things where, depending on how the judges look at it and if they just, they choose to let it continue, it may end up being something. And that's why Nintendo, for the headache and to avoid the negative press, they may be like, hey, we're going to settle this, make this go, go away quietly. Here's X amount of dollars. But, but they sign normally, NDAs I, and it's done. I mean, they normally don't. I think they only settle out. Tw- Maybe once or twice. I know they lost two of them. I know they lost one for the 3DS one. And I think that we won, Corey. Uh, they lost. Yeah. Was it like Panasonic or something they settled with or they lost to? It's like it's uh-huh. one. It's like the only two of them that they really only lost. Yeah, see, I don't remember it. I, mm, I don't remember. But I don't know. It's just it's weird. I don't know. I just think that this company is like, oh, hey, uh, we make controllers for tablets, too. We should try to get something out of this. So, Well, Nintendo lost a uh, lo- lawsuit back in 2008 for, the, for I believe, it was the uh, WaveBird. Oh, because of the technology and the receiver. Mm-hmm. $21 million they lost when they could have settled, and they said that they were going to settle. And they decided not to. Uh, then there was also a twenty back in ninety one. They paid up uh, twenty five million dollars for a settlement there. Nintendo lost the the patent three years ago. It looks like to Philips for patents for stuff for the Wii and Wii U. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Nintendo's lost more than a handful of times. Just but, briefly looking through. <laughs> but to them, that's like only two dollars. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, but I but I mean to be fair though, to not lose and have to pay that much money, they may be like, "Hey, how many wiki pads did you sell? Oh, you sold like a hundred thousand of them. X amount. This is what your cost is. Blah blah blah. We'll pay you X amount per unit that you sold. Blah blah blah. Or per, let's say per anticipated switch, mm-hmm. they'll pay them a discounted you know rate, and they'll be like, "All right, that comes to like five million dollars." Here's your five million dollars. We sign NDAs. This all goes away. Done. I don't think so. I think they're gonna go to court, and I think Nintendo is probably gonna end up winning because they want they want Nintendo to stop selling the Switch. Well, you can't really stop they, selling it because um, a your pad your patent for your accessories doesn't reflect the patent for the Switch itself because it comes with a, the, a console. It you know and the controllers I'm like are part of it. Like it comes as a whole. They don't have a console, uh, game game dive whatever. They don't have a console that goes along with their accessories or their controllers. It they may need, be some they guy. need. Right, they need Apple, Google, uh, Android, or they need someone else's device in order to have their product even work. Because it it uses the power from the device to power those controllers. Because they're right. I I from what I read up, at least some of them don't use 
battery or like traditional batteries or chargers, they need the power from the the tablets to do that. What Ray? But, what? But looking at the the litigation, I'm looking at the complaint right now. Uh huh. Essentially, what they're using as the defense for the flexible bridge section is the dock. Because essentially, the controller is detachable, and it's not exactly connected by the by the flexible bridge. But the flexible bridge is part of the patent. Essentially, what the game vice thing that they're that I'm looking at the exhibit right now. Basically, it's the two pieces like a, it looks like a Joy-Con basically from the front. Uh-huh. So they may have a leg to stand on with this to at least be like, hey, you got to pay us some money for this together because if they do have legitimate patents and it's found that way. If it if, if it really goes that far up, I don't think it's going to stop the switch. But they'll be like, "Hey, you have to pay X amount of dollars per switch that you sell." So I think Nintendo may just want to settle this to make it go away quietly, rather than take the risk. Mm-hmm. I think they're going to go to court, but we'll yeah. we'll see. We'll see how we all. I mean, we'll check we'll check back in six years when the when Nintendo puts out their next console and nobody cares about the switch anymore. Yeah, put a pin in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> we won't even remember this happened anymore. It'll I be know. like whatever. Well, uh, shoot, they probably don't even make that uh, item no more. No, I'm they assuming. still make it. They still make it. It's just under a different branding now. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 differently. Corey said now it's the thing with the uh, the weird little hook thing on the back that that latches in. Okay. <sighs> so. Man. So, wow. Um, uh, there is one, uh, and you guys, it's more of a poll. Um, 99 Gays and County is owned in Nintendo eShop. Um, this is from Nintendo Life, and they kind of want to know how people feel about that um, and give their thoughts. Um, and I know me and you, Corey, we've been talking about, like, for the past few weeks that just unannounced games have been coming to the eShop. I know, like, Severed so, kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, so I kind of want to uh, ask how you guys feel about the eShop right now. Have you guys, like, take a look at it, and do you like some of the games that they offer? Not really much on the Wii U, just because I'm not really inclined to buy stuff digitally on the Wii U. Oh, no, I'm talking about Switch. I don't have a Switch, so I can't help you. Oh, so you're going to buy Wii U. Okay. I, I, like, I'm going by Wii U. I don't, like, Switch, I'd probably, now that they've kind of got their act together with you know, assigning things to an account rather than to a device. Uh-huh. Yeah. So the one thing that kind of bothers me about Switch is not being able to move your data around. Yeah, that's... I mean... Because if your Switch dies, you're kind of screwed. That's That's got to be coming soon, right? I mean, like, they can't do this again. Like, I don't know. But for me, like, I've been... <coughs> oh, whoa. Ooh. Yeah. Breathe, Corey, breathe. Ah. Chief it. You Don't die. something good. Uh, no, I drank some of this water and it started to come back up and went down the wrong pipe. I was like, Ugh. but anyway. Oh no. Uh, for me, like I love for some reason. And Ray, you and I talked about this the other day. Who are like, I need a bigger memory card <laughs> for Switch. And like I'm, I was tr- I thought the 128 would be big enough until the I one- told Corey before he bought it. I know he, he told me. One. He told me like in December when they were tell like when they said confirmed the internal storage was only 32 gigs. Like he's like, you better get bigger than like, because uh, I was I was thinking about getting just a 64 gig because I, like, I was like, you want to get. I'm like you I'm gonna buy that. I'm gonna buy physical. I don't have time for Nintendo games not to be physical. And since then, <laughs> like my 128 is like a third of the way full already, and I barely have any games on there. And the big games I have physically, like all the Nintendo games I have physically, and uh, you know I <laughs> I wish I would have bought a mem- bigger memory card. And like you know when the I'm trying to hold out for the one terabyte memory cards, and I don't know how much they're gonna cost or whatever, but like. Anything that's not Nintendo first party, I'm still bu- less than the Vita memory cards. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, okay. So the two fifty six gig micro SD card is the same price as a sixty four gig Vita memory card on Amazon. <laughs> that's so stupid. Why? Ugh. Sony. Proprietary memory. That's part of what killed the Vita. Sony, you're the reason why I'm not replacing my Vita is because your darn memory card prices won't come down. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but anyways, like, 
anything that's not Nintendo first party, I'm buying digitally. And like, that's how it's been on my other consoles recently. It's like, I'm really switching over to like the digital space because it's just, it's just for convenience pretty much. And like, if I like a game, I'll buy the physical copy like horizon. I'll keep the physical copy because I, I think that game's really great. Uh, you know, God of War, I'll probably keep the physical copy because I, I think that game's going to be really good. But, like, Nintendo first-party stuff, like, I'm just going to have to have the first party or have to have the physical copy because there's something about Nintendo first-party games that you just like seeing lined up on your shelf. And it's I know it's from, like, childhood when we all had games just laying on the floor or lay, sitting on a shelf or whatever. But, like, mm-hmm. I don't know. But, like, in terms of, like, the eShop, there are so many games on there on the eShop that I have downloaded just because of the portable factor of the Switch. You know, um, Wonder Boy I downloaded, Snake Pass I downloaded, uh, you know, Mighty Gunvolt Burst I downloaded. And it's because, like, I can play it portably. And, you know, they, they're games I probably wouldn't have really da- downloaded on PS4 or Xbox One. But the fact that, like, these games are kind of curated and kind of nintendo's been doing a really good job even like even uh on the switch in their news feed like celebrating new releases in the eShop. like switch when you turn it on has this new news feed on your home screen before you go into your app screen and like it'll say hey this game's out now you can watch a trailer right here type thing and like you press play on the trailer and you can watch it right there before you even turn on your switch and like Every time a new eShop game comes out, like a big eShop game, it's celebrated and it's it's they they do a good job of curating. Now there's a couple games on there that are questionable, like Vroom Broom, which <laughs> like you know there there is another there is another one recently that came out that I was like, what what is this? Why does this exist? But like, uh, remember the days of shovel we wear? Oh my gosh! Uh, yes, but I think Nintendo's doing a better job. It, not a great job, but a better job than the other two consoles of like, hey, we've got a big indie game coming out this week to uh, fill the gap between our major first party releases. Uh, here's a trailer. Here's how much it costs. Like, you can add it to your wish list or you can go straight to the eShop and buy it. So, uh, but yeah, I think I think the eShop has some great content. Like, and it's it's made me buy games that I didn't think I was going to buy on other consoles. So. Yeah, yeah. I know. Definitely, when I get my Switch, I am still doing physical. Like, I'm probably, I'm definitely gonna get all the physical games that's out. Um, like, I gotta have the Scale Five. Uh, I, I'm going to have Ultra Street Fighter, uh, Super Bomberman. Like, all that stuff, I'm definitely gonna have because, uh, definitely with Nintendo games, I definitely go out and support them when they come out. Like. Like with their cartridges, like with PlayStation and Xbox, I might catch it on the sale or I might get it used. And then if there's a good flash sale that's going on, I'll get that digitally. But like I'm, like when it comes to Nintendo consoles, it's like a sixty dollar purchase that I'm ready to put down because I believe in that company putting out a really good product. And you know, for people who say that Nintendo don't got games and stuff, I'm like, well, you got ninety like ninety games on eShop digitally. If you if you're a person who plays PC games like, through Steam, it's almost the same way, but just better, in a sense. Yeah, dude, Steam Steam curation is like <laughs> I'm not even on. <laughs> I'm not even. Oh no, right here, right, give me that shady look. I know. <laughs> you cannot like... compare the Nintendo eShop to Steam. I'm sorry, you can't. I'm, I'm not just, comparing I'm, it. I'm I was just, talking, just, just I was just commenting on how great the curation on steam is yeah i know steam is great but it's like oh it's kind of <laughs> like that but better um no no, no. it's, not. <laughs> it's a thousand no, times I... better than steam <laughs> <laughs> oh man although need need a better <laughs> like search function the store needs an update and like yeah yeah it's coming but the switch store needs an update dude it's just these t- tiles with an image of the game and a price, and there, there are no specific order. There are no like, whatever. It's just like current releases, popular releases, search. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it's 
It's like, <laughs> yeah. No, I tried using the Xbox Store not too long ago, and I was just like, "What the heck is this?" Yeah, that that that, that needs an update. I mean, the PlayStation help. Store is bad. Don't get me wrong, but the Microsoft Store is slightly worse. Yeah. You know, with the with the PlayStation Store, at least at the side, I know I, I could go to deals and see what they got for that week. Yeah. Like, whereas with Xbox, it's whatever their featured deals are, good and you got to dig, this. search. Oh, tr- good luck trying to get to your library. Sometimes you're like, okay, what games do I have? How do I see all the games I have? <laughs> oh, oh you I, have to go you're talking about Xbox, the menu. right? Yes. Yeah, so it's you like have to go through the menu in the library in the menu, not on the store where. Uh... That's weird. <laughs> Xbox is so frustrating. Like I, <laughs> I wish it was more like PlayStation because there's an actual library button and you can put your stuff into folders, and it's just, it's nice. But like, I don't know. It. I have all the games I play on Xbox pinned to my dashboard, so it's not like a huge deal. But there, hopefully, this new update to the Xbox dashboard is going to be like. Just, yeah, from what Aaron Paul said. For the preview that the, the the you know the insiders or whatever get, it was actually pretty good. So yeah, let's hope let's hope that it, it fixes some things. But yeah, no. So I have my complaints with every one of them. I'm, I don't think anyone's like better above you know the other ones. But poor Nintendo. Nintendo needs to do something because good goodness, like the eShop is just not friendly. It's not user friendly at all. Even going back to like the Wii eShop when they first like announced it and everything. Yeah, just like what is this jumbled mess of craziness? It's just like wow, and it just like progressively somehow got worse instead of getting better. <laughs> I mean, well, I, I think sometimes uh, a lot of people think that Nit- Nintendo is not kind of a technical company, kind of like Sony and Microsoft. You know, Microsoft is definitely for PC, so they know they kind of know that tech you know that technical technical space whereas sony you know they learn and over time they evolve you know nintendo is just like we're focused on getting our harbor out really and just putting out games out so all the online and digital space like we're still learning and stuff because like i always i always go back and say japan still doesn't know how we do stuff in the west and where some some of my friends is like what they do in japan they need to like kind of learn over in the west on how to do it to integrate it and i and me and Corey actually talked about this i'm just like nintendo and microsoft got somewhat of a good relationship and i think when they online feature actually start and you know they they keep evolving i think they need to probably study uh x not xbox live but kind of like talk to microsoft and just be like you know see what pointers and stuff that they can learn from to make their stuff better i still think you know? i still think with that talk about microsoft and and nintendo i still think microsoft and nintendo are going to work out some sort of deal to put the rare games on the n64 classic next year I'm feeling it i'm feeling i it. could see that like I could see that. Like, and maybe not, maybe not Goldeneye because the Double Seven license is a nightmare. But like, you know, Perfect Dark, Banjo, uh, Blast Core, maybe, maybe not Blast Core. Blast Core wasn't great. And, uh, and uh, Conquer. Uh, yes. I think Metopia kind of gave Metopia kind of gave a little hint. Shout out to Rare in one of their little games. Yeah, I saw that. Okay. Uh, yeah, and so. the Killer Instinct was on the N sixty four was great. You know, stuff like that. So, I mean, we may see something to where they may be able to work something out. And then maybe for the SNES Classics, maybe we'll be able to be like, hey, because technically Nintendo owns the the rights to Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Country, but not to the whole game coding and everything like that, because Rare did those. So maybe we may see a comeback of those games, too. Like, I was playing those the other day. Like, man, these games were fun. Like, they were legitimately fun. Yeah. And and I think they could work out a good deal. I think it would be it would be big more on Nintendo part than Microsoft. That's gonna, Nintendo Nintendo's just going to throw money at Microsoft. They'll say okay, and then that's probably going to be the way that it goes. It's just going to be Nintendo throwing money at them. Yeah, that's nah, shoot. Like, is how it, much is it going to cost for us to do this? All right, X amount of dollars. All right, here you go. Yeah, yeah. And I think that that would definitely be a good business for Rare because it's just like. 
that that passion and that fire that they had on the Nintendo systems, I think they could re get that passion or for the Xbox in a way. They have I'm just to saying have that create, they, they just have to have creative control though. That's the thing. It's yeah. rare back in those days for the Super Nintendo and the N sixty four, they had creative control. Microsoft has delegated Rare to making the party games and Kinect stuff. And now Killer Instinct, which they're happy about, but Killer Instinct probably isn't where, where they want it to be because of the, the financial plan that Microsoft put forth for Where Rare didn't do Killer Instinct, so... Yeah, but I mean, you know what I mean? They, they had people from the original Rare team that worked oh, on Killer help Instinct out. help out with the development of Killer Instinct. Okay. For and now that Iron Killer Galaxy team. even hired a couple members from that team. The N64 team to work on it because, like, then the original the team who did the reboot of Killer Instinct now it was bought by Amazon Double Helix or mm -hmm. whatever, and now yep. like uh, Iron Galaxy took over, and now they have they have some of that rare fighting team on there. Cause, yeah, because Rare had like three teams. <laughs> they had like their first person mm -hmm. shooter team, and then they had the platforming team, and then they had the. I guess other team, which was well, like the other team that worked between the yeah. yeah. So, Rare is a fascinating like that Super Nintendo N sixty four Rare was just super fascinating. Ugh, man. Well, oh, by the way, by the time you watch this episode or listen to it, I just remembered Sonic Mania Collector's Edition will be in my hands. Yes, and I'm, Corey is super I, excited for Sonic. I, I I just never was. I don't like. I enjoyed. I, I don't the Sonic see. Games, here's the thing. I, I don't like, know if I'm. <laughs> I don't know if I'm excited for Sonic Mania or not. <laughs> uh, you don't know if you're going to be excited or disappointed yet. You're like, yeah. Time will tell. I'm not. I haven't been excited for a Sonic game since Sonic Three, and guess what? Sonic Three was pretty disappointing. So, <laughs> well, it's, it's actually fun. It's actually funny because they. They was just like some people got early copies in their hand, and I haven't seen nobody streaming or even put it on YouTube yet. I'm like, yeah. that's not that uh -oh. doesn't tell anything. Well, I got it for Switch though. I figure it'd be a good like Switch game, and I don't know. I get a cool little Sonic statue, I guess, and that's cool. Yeah, but I don't know. I was thinking about canceling that the other day when I went up there. Did you? No. <sighs> nah. I don't know. I need to start being smarter with games I'm purchasing because like now that the switch hype is over and I want everything now I just need to be like I need to start compartmentalizing <laughs> well shoot I'm still trying to find stuff for, uh, for PlayStation 4 to get this holiday because I don't got crap <laughs> oh. I think what neck to <laughs> and uh goodness I think once I buy uh, I think once I buy uh no the frozen uh for um, Horizon, the Frozen Wild. For Horizon, yeah. Uh, other than that, I really. I mean, like Sony, Sony has that s system now, though, where like they re they focus on the third party games in the fall and they release their first party games in the spring. Like that's just that's their yeah, system but, now, and like but, I, but they don't want to take take away from their own games, so they are just like, hey, we have the marketing behind Star Wars and Destiny and. Uh, what else? Call of Duty. Like, why do we need to put out our own games in that hot yeah, garbage yeah. mess? Like because that. I mean, of, Grand. They have three games coming out this fall, though. Grand Turismo, Uncharted, Grand Turismo, Knack. There's your fall, and then in the spring will be something. That, but that's pitiful. And right? and Horizon. Uh, y Yakuza is coming out too. Yeah. So. Uh, six. Kuwami. The remake of one. Mm -hmm. Oh, I still got to get a uh, zero and uh. I still gotta beat four. I gotta beat the other ones on PlayStation Three. Yeah. So uh -huh. next week, next week uh, will be the Lost Legacy. Then they got Yakuza coming in the week after that. Then Destiny coming the week after that. Then about a month after that, Shadow Mordor is coming, mm -hmm. and which they're giving advertising for, even though I know Microsoft is getting a, a chunk of that too. But mm -hmm. Frozen Wildlands or Frozen Wilds, then uh, comes November. Then Star Wars. And then th their spring is going to be their heavy hitters. That's where they're going to see the heavy hitters start coming out in the spring, which um, will maybe God of War. Yeah. Days Gone? Is, is days, days, yeah, days is, Gone is a is 20... Days gone, is that leading it's or... Slated, it's, it's slated as a twenty possible 2018 release, but... 
Dude, and, that game. Oh, needs, that, on my luck, it's probably going to get pushed back. To dude, that game. That game needs to come out sooner than later because it does just because of the Last of Us. Like they don't want those two games. Like they don't want those two games in the same window. And Last of Us yeah. is probably going to be a 2019 game. <laughs> Depending on what, because they're showcasing something at Games Gamerscom, right? No, places Sony's not going to be there for Gamerscom, are they? For Gamescom? No, they're good. I they are gonna have a presence, but they're not gonna. They're not doing like a big reveal or anything. They're saving so everything for. Yeah. They're saving everything PSX. for PSX. So. Yep. Okay. But. Um, Press conferences. Let's see. My Xbox has one. Should we just title Nvidia. this episode? Should we just title this episode "Nintendo Power Block"? <laughs> Nintendo Power Block Nostalgia Edition <laughs> Volume Two. <laughs> oh man, I like I like this episode though. Uh, this is this is this is just like a fun hangout. It's episode. always fun. Yeah. But, uh, well, since uh, there's a couple more things that need to be recorded today, uh, why don't why don't we kind of just wrap it up and kind of call it a day? Uh, I have to attend to the wife in dinner. Yeah. Yeah, we could definitely do that. Are you are you joining us for Arsenal X Ray? Uh, when are you recording that? Uh, I don't know yet. Let me know. I'll see where I am with stuff. Because like, I actually have to go and do some things, and then that's no, why don't. I'm not actually... Yeah, I do. No, I actually don't. not. I'm not going to be joining you guys on World 1-1, because something came up. So I already okay. there right now. So, but I need to get going. LRayNY617, Twitch, Twitter, all the gaming platforms, if you want to yes. join me. You know, if you want to join me there, I'll, I'm going to go ahead and just... Just do my spiel real quick, Corey. I kind of just that's, jumped in. That's cool. <laughs> no, that's cool. All right. And uh, just make sure you follow my show, Nerd Overdrive, uh, Facebook.com forward slash Phoenix Overdrive. Lee put up the uh, audio also, version. Yeah. Also <laughs> on Twitter. Yeah, we have to fix that. And Twitter you. and Instagram, PHX underscore Overdrive or Nerd underscore Overdrive. Uh, join the community page, Facebook.com slash groups slash PO Nation. Uh, where we discuss all the latest and greatest in gaming news and share all things nerd. You can check out previous shows of our show, Nerd Overdrive, on Facebook, or not Facebook, YouTube.com forward slash Phoenix Overdrive. The audio, when it's working, SoundCloud.com forward slash Phoenix Overdrive. Also, uh, look for Nerd Overdrive on iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play Music. Uh, You can check our show live. Hopefully, we're going to be back to recording after a little bit of a hiatus. Lee brought it up uh, on Bobby's most recent Nintendo show. Um... Facebook Live, go to the Facebook page. We have it there. Also on Twitch, PHX underscore Overdrive, or YouTube by adding slash live to the end of our URL for that. Uh, thanks, Corey and Ed, for letting me up be on, talk some Nintendo and some Nintendo stuff, go back down memory lane with some nostalgia stuff. But I always have fun with you guys, you know? So Ray, you know you're always allowed to, to, yes. to come in and, and chat with us. You know it's a good time. <laughs> it's always a good time. Ed, where can we find you? You guys can find me on Twitter at that retro coat. You can hear my podcast, Optional Opinion, on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, the anomalous radio network.podbean.com, and other podcast apps. Um, you can read Optional Opinion on IGN.com under anime, E N I M E. Uh, check out my retro review, uh, Skirmish Frogs. I made the moment. I see you running your head, Corey. Is that the video? You can read the moment at skirmishfrogs.com. Also, check out my. Uh, my review of bad video game um, review. Um, I am waiting to get Hellblade, so I will be uh, doing maybe my personal review for that when I can. I'm having a discussion with that later on in the year. Uh, getting ready for the beauty of video games. Uh, our very own Corey Derek will be on an episode. So, uh, <laughs> uh, and then more guests will be coming. All of that is dropping in September. And also check out, uh, hey, that's part of the play in Arsenal X here on NGR Radio. That's where you guys can find me. Um, if you want to friend me on Xbox, uh, the Lyrical One, which you also could check out my Twitch channel, uh, the Lyrical One, where I do my Let's Learn series, where I teach about that. And uh, if you on PlayStation, uh, you can find me at Ocomico. O K A M I C A L. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then when I get my switch, I'll give my friend code out. Uh, check out the Nintendo Power Block Facebook page. I'm going to end up putting my 3DS code on there if you guys want to get my friend code. So uh, it'll be going up there a little bit li- shortly after. Yeah. Yes. You can find me at Corey Hudson NHD on Twitter. You can find me at Corey NHD on Instagram and on Twitch. 
You can find me in the NGR Radio Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash NGR Radio Network. You can also find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Corey and HD. I'm going to start streaming, do some stuff there. Uh, so yes, cool I stu- stream all the time. Yeah, <laughs> we need to stream some Overwatch. Uh, there's some cool yes. stuff I'm kind of working on in terms of like things. Writing. Visual things. So I uh, can't wait to share that with you guys. Ray, I love you. Ed, I love you sometimes. Love you always. <laughs> oh, I love you both, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm just kidding. Thank you so much for watching, and until next week, <laughs> we love you. Bye, Game everybody. Over. Woohoo! Rise above, guys. Who got $5 so I can rent a blockbuster game? <laughs>